I think when you've suffered a little bit, you start to appreciate things. And so when we came here, we hired a caravan. I want to tell you that caravan was half the size of my bedroom. And in that caravan, I had to put myself, my wife, my three little children, and remember my wife was six months pregnant. Uh, I give all the glory to Jesus for a wonderful wife. Because without her, I could not have done what we did. We had no water. We had no toilets. We had no lights. We had no cell phones in those days. There was nothing. Jill had to take the motor car because I had the truck. And she would take a 20 liter bucket. That's the truth. With a clip top. And take it to the next door neighbor and ask them for water. That's how we started. And after a week or so, a very, very special man who's gone to be with the Lord, a farmer, John Knowles, he came over here and he left a water cart here. With his, came over with his tractor and left it right next to the caravan. So we had water. That was it. Then I saw a depression just down the bottom of the, of the field. We had no dams here. There was no water. You see, we had purchased a maize land. That's what we had purchased. That was all. There wasn't even a shack that we could build from. And we started, <laughs> even as I'm telling you this, I can hardly believe it myself, but it's the truth. We started digging a hole in this little damp patch, like a depression. And I started digging down. It was like I was in, digging a mine. And when we got right down, about eight foot down, water started coming up. See, I didn't have money to drill a ball. I really didn't have that money. And the water started coming up from the ground. Beautiful, sweet water. And that was the start of the water on this farm. And then I bought a windmill because we had no electricity here. And I put the windmill just above the spring that was coming out of the ground. And when the wind blew, then we'd pump water right up to this little house. And I'll never forget, my wife had long hair right down to her waist. And um, the first day I put a tank up there, a water tank, we managed to fill the tank and I put in a little shower in a little room right next to this room. And she had her first shower. We, the hot water, we got a, a drum, you know, the old fashioned system and we put fire underneath the drum. And that was our hot water. And we piped it into the little shower and Jill had her first shower. <laughs> and folks, I'm telling you, she stood in that shower, I think, for about half an hour. She just really appreciated it. I need to say at this point that, you know, I think when you've suffered a little bit, you start to appreciate things. Many of us walk into the shower, you just turn the tap on, walk. You don't even think about it, do you? But how many people have got to go and carry water from the river? Make a fire to heat the water up to be able to wash their children or to wash dishes or to cook food. We really need to appreciate what we've got. You know, Paul says in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, he says, I rejoice in my tribulation, my hardship, because tribulation worketh patience, patience character, and character hope. I've never met a man yet who is worth his salt who has not been through fire. Every single one of the heroes of this Bible went through fire. Do you know that not one disciple died a natural death? Each and every one of them died a martyr's death, including John, at the end of his life. Now, when you've been without water for a while, and then all of a sudden you can turn a tap on and water comes out of a, a rose, a shower, then you really appreciate it.